Hello everyone, and welcome back. This is episode 8, The Old Tiger. Last time, Hasbro was defeated, but was not knocked out yet. Scipio re-aims his sights on Gizgo and Mago. Will the new rising star of Rome prevail or be defeated? Back in the Senate at Carthage, the news of Hasbro losing a Bakula was a hit to the war party, supported by Hannibal's family. This opportunity for criticism was not wasted by the peace party led by a man named Hanno. He wanted peace with the Romans. He wanted to build this nation on the backs of the Dominion and Libyan slaves. Hanno made a short address to the Senate. Italy, Spain, and France, those lands for the godless people. Why should we bother with them? Africa has more than enough resources closer to home. It would be wise to let those Romans have that part of the world. In opposition, a war party member named Himiko speaks. No, I say Hanno is wrong. Those lands may be godless, but with the right leadership, we can bring forward the truth there. With the profits from Hannibal and his brothers, we can finance the occupation of Africa. Is this not the genius of Carthage? They had enough support on the day of the vote, with only a small majority, another army was raised to support the war. Mercenaries formed a new army from the Greek city-states of Athens, Argos, and Corinth, also with the Numidians and Libyans as usual, placed under the command of, wait for it, Hanno. No, not that Hanno. This one was a war party member. He quickly sailed to Spain. Scipio gathered information about the enemy armies. He sent the tribune Salanus at the head of a legion to deal with Hanno, right after he would land, while Scipio went off in pursuit of Mago, who had already landed back in Spain, after recruiting tens of thousands from the Balearic Islands and France. Hanno, who was eager to make a name for himself, sadly found himself outmatched in only one battle against Salanus, later being captured and then shipped off to Rome. Poor Hanno. Anyway, back to the important people. Scipio would easily handle Mago in a quick battle. Mago lost most of his army, but didn't manage to escape. Scipio and his armies would then head back to the garrisons at Tarraco and New Carthage. Mago would fall back to Gades, where the old tiger was waiting. Together, they decided to gamble everything on a great battle. They moved towards the fields near Lippa. The old tiger yelled, and thousands came in response. The mercenaries started talking amongst themselves. Roman General Scipio had been releasing Spanish prisoners without ransom. This made a few question if they were on the right side of history. Then a ship arrived full of gold and silver. This made the men realize that they just really wanted money after all. Scipio told his men that the enemy has presented themselves willing to fight and that they should answer their courage by meeting them in open battle. The men cheered on. They marched at the usual quick pace. The men did enjoy their trip along the southern coastline, all the way being followed by the Roman fleet. This made the men feel hyped for battle. Yes! Yes! The Romans and the Carthaginians met on the battlefield near Elippa. The armies lined up in their usual formations. All day, the armies stared at each other. No movement was made. Gizgo was the first to retire from the field, then followed by Scipio. They developed a schedule for the next several days. Wake up, eat breakfast, watch some TV, check out the mall, wait for midday, start mobilizing the army, show the banners, shout the war cries, then wait for the Romans to do the same. Then wait the rest of the day, then as night comes, leave from the field, grab some burgers before going to sleep. Once this was set into Gizgo Mago's head, Scipio changed the game. He had his men wake up early before the sunrise. The Roman and the allies ate a hearty breakfast. Then the skirmishers and V-lights advanced towards the enemy. This created a smoke screen of dust which blocked Gizgo's eyes. The Romans flipped their formation. The weaker Spanish allies were now in the center with the Astati, Principes, and Triarii on the flanks. Gisco saw this far too late to change his usual formation. The rings of the Roman heavy infantry 
then moved forward ahead of the Spanish. This allowed the Roman troops to decimate the Carthaginian ally forces. Gisco did have heavy infantry in the center, but they were paralyzed in place because the Roman allies were still advancing but far more slowly. If they assisted their allies, then they would be hit from a rear attack. So they stood and watched. Then the Romans turned inwards and surrounded the Carthaginian center. It was a massacre. Gisco and Mago both managed to escape the battle, fleeing west towards the river to the Atlantic Ocean. The Battle of Olympia was the knockout Scipio was waiting for. Gades and any remaining armies of Carthage and Spain soon surrendered. When news arrived to Carthage of Gisco and Mago's escape, Gisco was on his way to Africa, while Mago would head back to the Balak Islands. Carthage would never retake Spain from Roman control. Now, we into the final acts of the war. But first, we take a detour. Next time, we will see the Romans having to deal with Hasbol as he makes his faithful reunion with his brother Hannibal. Thanks for listening. Like and subscribe for more. This is the Son of Pentheus, signing out. Man, what is it, man? Hiya, pal.